In Bangalore city, suppose forty percent of the population has not eaten for three days. You think you will go to your work, you think you will go and watch a cinema, you think you will take a walk in uh, Lal Bagh, hello? Do you believe this? Everything will collapse. So this is important, once there is no food, all other activity will just collapse. Maybe you have food in your home, but that won't help. That will probably invite death. If you have lot of food, most probably it'll invite death because hungry people have no... will... their humanity will evaporate when they're hungry for too long. You must understand, our civilization, our culture, our... even our humanity is there only because this has been satisfied. If this is not satisfied, if this is not found anything for three to five days, that's it, everything will go bad. So, globally we are heading in this direction because right now on an average, every year, twenty-seven thousand species of organisms are going extinct. Twenty-seven thousand species, you heard it right, I am not talking about twenty-seven thousand organisms, Twenty-seven thousand species are going extinct per year. So this biodiversity is sliding like this. Somewhere between twenty-five to forty years, it is expected, this slide will become a tumble. When it starts tumbling down, there is nothing you and me can do. We must understand today, your piece of land may look rich and wonderful, but in the world when the biodiversity starts dropping, it drops everywhere. So we are heading in this direction, everybody knows the problem, but somehow nobody was talking about it. As I went about, I saw that this is a serious issue, everybody knows how serious it is and they also know what should be done, but everybody is thinking somebody else should do it. I'm telling you, there is nobody else but you and me, this is our world, this is our time on the planet. If we act, it is there, if we do not act, it is not there, that's all there is with life. This is our time on the planet, what do we want to make out of this? So these micro-organisms, oh, why do I care if they die? I want you to understand, in the last seventy years, in the last seventy years, sixty-seven percent of the vertebrate life on this planet has gone, sixty-seven percent is disappeared. Eighty-two percent of the biomass insects are gone. Ninety-two percent of freshwater aquatic life is gone. What's our plan, really? What's our plan for ourselves and our children? What is the plan? It looks like we don't have a plan. Albert Einstein said something very disparaging about Indians. Shall I tell you? Because he's supposed to be an intelligent man. He said, Indians cannot think beyond fifteen minutes. I want to prove he met the wrong Indians. Hello? He met the wrong Indians. Can you think not for fifteen minutes? Can you think the well-being of yourself, this nation, the people and the world for at least fifty years? Hello? If you don't think, then you should have been an earthworm because you only deserve that sized brain. This sized brain is to be able to think, imagine and create what we can do in the next fifty years at least, if not five hundred. Hello? Should we or not? Hey, for all this, I want you to understand, See, the, our life, initially when I did the chant, what the chant is telling you is, there are only two ingredients to your life, a certain amount of time and a certain amount of energy. Time is rolling away for all of us, nobody can stop it, nobody can slow it down, nobody can roll it back. Time is rolling away. As you sit here, you are two hours closer to your grave. This is not my curse, this is the way life is. Hello? So time is rolling away, you cannot control it. But your energies you can manage. If you intensify your energies substantially, you will see what somebody does in ten years, you will do in one year. So if both of you live 
for a thousand years in terms of profoundness of experience and also in terms of impactfulness of activity, it would feel like you have lived for a thousand years. Now, there are many, many stories talking about how yogis lived for five hundred years, thousand years. It is not necessary that they actually lived chronologically five hundred years. They lived so intensely that the amount of work that they did, it looked like they lived for five hundred years. Now, this is a possibility for every human being. I was, uh, you know, I was riding into Bucharest. I was to get there at seven o'clock in the evening, but due to inclement weather, very challenging weather and also the roads were not uh, very normal. Because of that, uh, we got delayed. What should have been uh, approximately five-hour drive became over nine and a half-hour drive. So we reached Bucharest only at 11.15. So there was a TV interview for me at seven o'clock, but they were still waiting at 11.15. So I walked in straight, I parked the motorcycle and walked in straight into the interview and an hour and a half television interview and then uh, I was talking to the anchor and he said, Sadhguru, how do you do this? At this age, how do you do it? Three times he said, this age, I didn't like it. I said, what do you mean this age? No, no, you're sixty-five. See, I have lived my life so intensely, I never had the time to get old. You need a lot of time to get old. So, Bangalore, people of Bangalore, I will make sure you don't have time to get old here. There's lots of work to do. Right now, the, the government of Karnataka is committing itself and uh, we are fired up on this. Are you? And uh, I am also going to spend substantial amount of time in Bangalore city. So that means, that means you will have no time to get old. Okay, that means a lot of work. Hello? So, it's been uh, from 1994. From 94 to now is how much? Twenty-eight years, huh? Twenty-eight years to build a yoga center in Coimbatore City. It took twenty-eight years to bring it where it is. Today, it is a significant place in the world. It is on the world map in a very important way. But. Wait, wait, I will tell you the... I'll tell you the... <laughs> there's a rider, but I want Bangalore Center to be in that level of popularity and function in three years' time. Are you ready? Then save your hands, don't clap and waste your time. Save them, keep them strong, keep, keep yourself well because this is important in our lives. If we get to do something bigger than ourselves, that's the best thing that can happen to us. What are you saving yourself for? To be very fit and healthy in your grave? Hello? No, it's important you expand life. Don't try to save it, there is no, net, there is no way to preserve life. Only dead can be preserved, life has to be lived. You cannot preserve it. So, uh, you, the, many of the youth, uh, before I come, before January, you clean yourself up, uh, get all the spirits out of you, smoke out of you, everything, I got a lot of work for you. Hello? And uh, I will fill you with another kind of thing which will leave you always stoned. Not, not up and down, not up and down like what you're doing, just on all the time. You ready? So, save soil as a moment. Well, today out of enthusiasm you're doing whatever you're doing. It is important, this is how human societies work, that first we think about it, then we get emotive about it, then uh, we start thinking how, and then action. This is how human societies function. So it's good right now you're thinking about it, some amount of emotions invested in it, but now when it comes to action, action has to be judicious. Shall I go and fix my kitchen garden? 
Uh, that's very cute, but that's not a solution. Solution is in the agricultural land. If you want to touch the agricultural land, you have to touch the farmers. If you have to touch the farmers, you must go with an incentive. If you want an incentive, you need government and industry and other people to provide these industries. So we worked out a three-pronged uh, incentive process, which I have presented to all the ministers and the chief minister, and uh, this will also be available to you, you can look it up, because it needs incentive. Right now the farmer's economy is in such a way that if you touch it, it'll collapse. Not just in India, across the world, unfortunately it's in a bad place. In United, in United States, fifty percent of the farmers have not seen a dollar of profit in the last twelve years. There have been cases of whole families shooting themselves up. Highest amount of suicide in United States among any given profession is among farmers. The highest amount of suicide in Europe and Central Asia in any given profession is farmers. In India, of course, unfortunately, it is farmers. So, don't… don't get into this emotion and think I'm against pesticide, I'm against fertilizer. No, we are just against suicide. We are not against anything else, we want people to live. So, do not get into these things, organic farming, this farming, that farming, no. Let the farmer decide how to do farming. We give incentives to enrich the soil, so that soil enrichment happens. Because those of you living in urban areas have this idea, let's get rid of the pesticide, let's get rid of the fertilizer. If today if we get rid of fertilizer and pesticide in the world, the world's food production will come to twenty-five percent of what it is right now, that is death. So let's not talk irresponsibly. If you want to acquaint yourself, all of you young people, we will provide you lots of information. If you're willing, we will provide the whole technical book that's available to you. We can provide that online for you. If you approach us in a committed way, you must educate yourself. Such a serious problem. If maximum number of people are not educated in that, our education minister has assured us this will go into the school textbooks. But this is another problem. Ah, hey, wait, 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 wait. This is another problem. Wherever I go in the world, people say, Sadhguru, let's go to the schools, let's tell the children. I say, just shut up, don't tell the children, because till children become fifteen years of age, let them grow up without any concern about anything. Let them eat well, play well, sleep well, learn well, grow up well, that's all it should be. They are worried about their future, is that what you want to create? So, children will be educated about soil in a different way, but it's important that the adults should educate themselves about the, about the dire situation we are in. Children should educate in terms of how this can be done at various levels, they must know about it, but it is not necessary to put fear and panic into child's life, because how a child uh, processes his or her emotion is very different from how an adult does, by putting anger, fear, resentment into your child's mind, you could poison the child's life for good. So please be careful about this because the moment I say children, everybody said, let's get… let's get the children. Because this has become a fashion in the world, all the nonsense you… you should be ashamed even to tell the children, we destroyed the soil, you fix it. Hello? We should be absolutely ashamed to even tell them. Let's not tell them, before they come to know about it, we should have fixed it. So, thank you very much, all of you. This is important, I want you to know, this is not just about food, this is not just about agriculture. This is the basis of our life. The foundations of your life is in the microbial life. What you call as microbial life, is miniature human beings. Slowly they grow and they become like this. Maybe it takes a million years for them, but this is how it is. Even in your body, sixty percent of your body is microbial life. Only forty percent is your parental genetics. I want you to remember this. As it is in the soil, so it is in this. Whether will you get it now or will you get it when you're buried? This is the only question. Shall we get it now? So save soil, let's make it happen. Thank you very much.
There is a soil anthem that all of you may already know.